Hello, I'm John Frausto. Wanted to share this video with you. Uh, I did a video yesterday on Federer retiring, and um, you know, many of you left comments feeling that he was the GOAT. And I came across an article on Sporting News, and the gentleman that wrote it did a great job. He actually picked his top six, and I'm gonna share those with you. The top three probably would not surprise you, but the order may. So I'm gonna share that with you. Coming in at, at number six is Jimmy Connors. So some of you may not remember him if you're, I'm 51 years old, so I definitely remember him. But um, in the article, the, uh, the, the writer said, Connors enjoyed an incredible spell of dominance in the 1970s. Although his imperious 1974 season remains one of the tennis great what ifs. And what that means is, uh, while compiling an astonishing 99-4 record over the calendar year, the American won all three Grand Slams he contested. Think about that. Winning three Grand Slams in a year is, winning one is tough. Jimmy won three, but Connor's participation in the World Team Tennis League meant that he was banned from competing at the French Open, which made room for Borg that year to win it and then win it again in 70. Five. So it's pretty interesting. He could have had the, uh, the the Grand Slam, but due to his participation in the league, he did not. Uh, one other thing that's really interesting is Connors uh, owns the record for most ATP titles. He won 109. The only other person to win over or get to that 100 mark is Federer. Coming at number five is Bjorn Borg. Borg was the initial beneficiary of Connors French Open withdrawal or that absence. Borg was probably in my mind probably one of the best movers of all time. Just an absolute cat on the court. Fun to watch. He won back-to-back -back titles in 1974 and 75 at the French Open. Those were the first two of his 11 Grand Slam titles, all of which the stylist Swede carved out amid the con contrasting surroundings of Roland Garros. After beating Ily Nastasi for his first Wimbledon title in 1976, he defeated Connors in the next two finals and replaced his foe, his foe as world number one. Won. So Borg, as we know, retired early. Who knows? He won 11 titles, but he could have pegged a lot more if it wasn't due for his early retirement. Coming in at number four is Rock Rod the Rocket Laver. The Australian was unbelievable, an all-court master who straddled the amateur and open era. So he was in that transition period from being an amateur until we went into that open era. Laver already had an Australian Open from his home major in 1960 and a Wimbledon crown from 1961 before completing the calendar Grand Slam winning all four majors in 1962. And guess what? He did it again, the calendar Grand Slam. He's done it twice. And uh, so we know how hard that is. So Rocket, um, the other thing is he hauled in 200 career titles. Just think about that, 200 career titles. Connors won 109, Federer's at 100. Let's double that, Rod Laver, coming in that fourth place, won 200 career titles. Something that we'll probably never ever see in our lifetime. Number three, who do you think it is? Roger Federer, according to this gentleman from the Sporting News. You know, when I think about styles of play, I would consider Federer an artist. He was an athlete and an artist at the same time. Every time he stepped on that court, he could generate a masterpiece. He was so fluid, um, so graceful on the court. Um, 20 Grand Slams, he had some injuries. The thing that was crazy about Federer is how many Grand Slams he lost, um, how many finals he was in in Grand Slams and he lost. But uh, he did he did disclose that he is going to re be retiring after the uh, Labor Cup next week. Many of you think he is the GOAT, and I think it's not only because of his play, 20 Grand Slam titles, but just because he's such a good human being and ambassador for tennis. But I'd have to agree, as much as, I mean, he's my favorite player, I would say that 
I'd put him in at that number three spot as well. All right, number two, I think we know we're coming up to, um, you know, the final two. Before I get into those uh, two players, do me a favor. I don't know if you realize this, but the majority of the people that watch these videos are not subscribers. And if you like content like this, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well. Share the video with, um, with some of your uh, people around you. So number two is Novak Djokovic. And uh, as the youngest of the three, right, the big three, there was a time when Djokovic looked set to be the third wheel in the Nadal-Federer saga. Even in his maiden Australian Open win in 2008, served notice of his huge potential. Uh, Djokovic is up to 21 titles. You know, similar to Laver, you know, or similar to Connors, where, um, you know, he wasn't able to play the French due to being in the league. You know, Djokovic has gone through some of these same challenges with, with COVID and not being vaccinated. Who knows? I, I personally think that Djokovic would have won the French Open this year. I know Alcaraz shined and won his first major, but I think it was Djokovic's to lose. So who knows where Djokovic would be if it wasn't for these COVID policies and these mandates. Djokovic, um, the, the Noel Slam, uh, in 2021, he was on course to emulate Labor's Grand Slam exploits only to fall at last. Daniel Medvedev beat him in the 2022 or 2021 US Open, which um, did not allow him to win the, uh, the Grand Slam. So. I would agree. I I personally feel that Djokovic is going to surpass Nadal. That's my personal thought. I'd be interested in your thoughts on where where he finishes. Can he get to 25 to 24? Put the number below. And then number one in my mind is is Rafael Nadal. And the, the writer of this article felt the same way as Federer did in 2017 and 2018. And Djokovic followed by dominating after his el elbow surgery. Nadal, Nadal is now enjoying a purple patch, very few predicted, and it places him out in front all time in the standings. What do you guys think Nadal's gonna finish? Has he seen his last Grand Slam with the likes of someone like Djokovic coming back? You know, Alcaraz is on the rise, Sinner, Medvedev. We've got a lot of these players that are on their coattails. I personally don't think Nadal's gonna win another Grand Slam. What are your thoughts on that? And, you know, as far as these top six players, am I leaving anybody out or is anybody, you know, this article leaving anybody you think that should be in the top six or top five? Should Nadal be number one? Uh, be interested in your thoughts. It's going to be an interesting off season and then going into 2023, you know, you know who's going to win who who's in line to win these majors can anybody win the calendar slam next year do you see anybody doing it? i think Djokovic could but we'll see so anyway thanks so much have a great day